Omega-3 fatty acids can help with myelination. You know, the fatty insulating layer on our nerves that gets damaged by our own immune systems when we have MS? I'm gonna geek out a bit on you today because there's recent news to share about this. There are two papers that were recently published that show the amazing effects of omega-3 fatty acids on our brain health, and I wanna share it with you today. First, a quick lesson on fatty acids. There are two main types of fatty acids, saturated and unsaturated, and unsaturated fat breaks down into polyunsaturated fat and monounsaturated fat. Omega-3s are a form of polyunsaturated fats. According to the Cleveland Clinic, omega-3 fatty acids help all the cells in your body function as they should. They're a vital part of your cell membranes, helping to provide structure and supporting interaction between cells. While they're important to all your cells, omega-3s are concentrated in high levels in your eyes and your brain. Hmm, eyes and brains, two big areas pretty much at risk with MS. The first paper I'd like to talk about came out in Neuroscience News earlier this month. In it, the researchers found a special transporter protein, MFSD2A, that plays a critical role in regulating brain cells responsible for protecting nerves with myelin sheaths. Hmm, this is pretty exciting. People with MS really, really like protecting our myelin sheaths. They found that the protein transports a lipid, lysophosa... <laughs> Lysophosphate. <laughs> Man, these big words. Phospho title. Da 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 da. da. <laughs> Fox with socks, right? They found the protein transports a lipid, lysophosphatidylcholine, which contains an omega-3 fatty acid, into the brain as part of the myelination process. LPC omega-3 lipids act as factors within the brain to direct oligodendrocyte... <laughs> Holy moly! LPC omega-3 lipids act as factors within the brain to direct oligodendrocyte development, a process that's critical for brain myelination. It kind of seems like a spa treatment for our brain cells, doesn't it? Oligodendrocytes are the cells that form the myelin in the central nervous system. They form the protective sheaths for our axons, our nerves. So we want to have happy oligodendrocytes. Happy oligodendrocytes lead to a smile and myelin. <laughs> I cracked myself up. <laughs> okay, the paper went on to say that when there's an absence of these MFSD2A proteins, that the amount of omega-3s were reduced. This prevented the precursor cells from maturing into oligodendrite cells. These mature cells are critical for brain myelination. They're hoping to do preclinical studies to see if these LPC lipids can help to remyelinate damaged axons in the brain. Yeah, this is pretty exciting research. The second paper is a research study that came out in Frontiers of Neurology this month as well. In it, they looked at the dietary protection against the visual and motor deficits induced by experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis, the mouse model of MS. They looked at how a highly structured ketogenic diet that was enriched in medium chain triglycerides, alpha linolenic acids and omega-3 fatty acid, and fiber affected mice prior to and after induction with this mouse model of MS. It's important to note that the diet differed from other ketogenic diets in that it didn't use lard, soybean oil, and hydrogenated fats. Instead, they used a diet enriched with fiber, and the sources of fat were medium-chain triglycerides, flaxseed oil, and canola oil. The diet was designed to be anti-inflammatory by minimizing omega-6 fatty acids and hydrogenated fats. They found that the mice, given the highly structured diet prior to induction of the mouse version of MS, preserved motor and visual function. And for those that were fed the diet beginning at the time of symptom onset, it could resolve some of the motor and visual deficits. Again, this is really exciting stuff. Increasing our omega-3s has the potential to really help us. We do need to keep in mind that these are limited studies and a lot more research needs to be done 
but they're looking into ways that supplementing omega-3s or adjusting diets may help people with MS. It may help prevent losses or even reverse them. The overall health benefits of omega-3 fatty acids are well studied and documented. They may help with lowering our triglycerides, lowering our risk of cardiovascular disease, death if we have cardiovascular disease, sudden death caused by abnormal heart rhythm, and blood clots. They can also lower our risk for some forms of cancer, Alzheimer's disease, dementia, and age-related macular degeneration. How cool is that? We need to get omega-3s from our diet. We don't produce it, we eat it. Are you eating a diet rich in omega-3s? Are you not sure? I eat a whole food plant-based diet as part of how I live well with my MS, so I get my omega-3s from plant sources. Some of the best plant sources of omega-3s are ground flaxseed, chia seeds, hemp hearts, edamame or soybeans, walnuts, Brussels sprouts, kidney beans, kale, and wild rice. I also supplement with algae oil, and I will put links in the description below if you would like to check out the supplements and some of these foods. It is really easy to incorporate these foods into our diets. I add a couple of tablespoons of ground flax seeds into my fruit smoothies or my smoothie bowls. They're also a great substitute for eggs in baking. I mix one tablespoon of ground flax seed with two and a half tablespoons of water and let it sit for five to 10 minutes. I also add hemp hearts to my smoothies or in my dressings, and I sprinkle them on my salads or I top my toast with nut butter with them. Chia seeds are also great in smoothies and dressings, and you can make awesome chia seed puddings. All of these seeds are great sources of omega-3s and can be used as thickeners or binders in cooking. Walnuts are a great snack all on their own, but they also make a great snack when paired with a medjool date. Chopped walnuts also add a lovely crunch to salads. Just be careful with too many walnuts as they can cause an upset tummy and they are really calorie heavy. A recommended serving size is one ounce or about 12 to 14 halves. When it comes to Brussels sprouts and kale, eat a lot. In addition to the omega-3s, they are loaded with nutrients to support our health like vitamins A, C, and K, potassium, magnesium, B6, and folate and they're also a great source of fiber. Aim to fill half your plate with non-starchy vegetables like greens, including Brussels sprouts and kale. Kidney beans, edamame, soybeans, and all beans are not only good sources of omega-3s, but they have lots of protein and fiber, and they're good sources of iron, magnesium, and potassium. You may have heard that beans have compounds that are not good for us, such as lectins and glycoproteins. These are only a problem in undercooked or raw beans, so don't eat them this way. Either soak and then thoroughly cook your beans or eat canned beans that have been already prepared. Wild rice, which isn't really a rice but a grass, gets an honorable mention because of its high level of omega-3s, but it also has a significant amount of protein, magnesium, potassium, vitamin B6, phosphorus, manganese, copper, and zinc. I have to admit, I don't eat this one very often as it can be a bit pricey, but when I do eat it, I usually put it in stuffing, soups, and stews. Omega-3s are an essential part of our diets as we don't manufacture them in our bodies. I work with a naturopathic doctor and I get my levels checked regularly. Do you get yours checked? Let me know in the comments below. If you are not, maybe ask your doctor next time you're getting your blood work done. Omega-3s are important to our brain health, our heart health, and the health of all our cells. Will you add or increase omega-3s in your diets? Let me know in the comments below. For more on diet and MS, watch this video or this video next. Thanks for joining me today. Please like the video with the thumbs up, subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos, and subscribe to my newsletter using the link in the description below. Until next time, be well.